Hi guys, this is Felix from SS1 Performance. I'm a personal trainer who studied a fair bit of biomechanics and I love drum and bass. So the first thing I have to do before I get into it is I have to say that there's three lines. There's a midline, a front line, and a back line. So I've separated them by this tape here. So if you wanna practice yourself, I'd suggest that you probably do the same thing. And what it does is it stops people from going like this. So you're not really kind of stepping properly because you don't understand that you're supposed to also step backwards as well as forwards. So the first thing we need to do is get you moving and understanding like that once something goes forward, something else goes backwards, some, something else then happens at the midline. So that's why there's three lines on the floor. The next thing is I've created this for some people who, like me, you know, look at something and then don't really kind of comprehend what's going on. F is flat foot, T is for toe, H is for heel, left and right, left and right, midline, front line, back line. Okay, so if any of you get confused, some people will actually find this more confusing, so you can just ignore it and just watch my steps. But for people like me, you know, when I look at someone's step, I think, what the hell's going on? This is your reference point. So, first of all, you've got flat foot and toe for DMB skank, which is level one, easiest one to do. And if you can do this, then the rest of them are pretty straightforward. So, what it looks like is this. In half time, it looks like this. And we always start from the same point. So that is always the starting point. And that's quite a good way to get your rhythm up. So what no one really explains in the videos is, every time you put a foot forward, it's a heel. Every time you put a, a foot backwards, it's flat on the ground. So if you can just remember that, you know that every time a, heel, a foot goes forward, it's always on a heel. Every time a foot goes backwards, it's always flat. So if every time you get stuck and you're trying to do this on your own, all you do, reset to right foot so that the heels are up and then one foot's flat. And then always remember, if my foot's gonna go forward onto this line, it's only heels. Only heels are allowed on that line. Only flat feet are allowed on that line, okay? So that's the movement. If you remember it in that way, that's about as specific as you need to get. Now, because this is level one, before you start running through the whole program, just understand one thing. Your foot is very, very strong. There's 26 different bones, and there's a big joint here, which is this big joint there, there. That is designed to produce loads of force. This toe is not designed to produce loads of force. So even throughout this program, and when you're doing this yourself, this joint is on the ground now when I'm like that, okay? So it's the equivalent of this, okay? This, if you ever see me doing this with my toes, it's because there's barely any weight on there. So if anyone does this, and you are placing a lot of weight on your toe, that's not really what this is supposed to be. Now, the last piece of the equation. Again, this is level one, so I'm going through the basics. And then I'm from level two, it's just straightforward practice. You should be able to rotate on the ball of your foot. There's no weight on this foot, you see? I'm just putting all my weight here, and I'm rotating over this big, what's called the metatarsal phalangeal joint, okay? That is supposed to be able to go to the ground. So if that can't go to the ground, Something else will. It'll either be your whole foot like this, which is the thing runners hate, which is pronation, or you'll start using your toe, which is another thing. If you have your toe facing out that way, it can mean that maybe this joint isn't really getting onto the ground properly. So that's the basic biomechanics. If your feet look like this, have a look at trying to get this joint to mobilize a little bit more. You should be able to move your foot like this. And obviously if your foot's stuck up here, that also means that this joint is not gonna get onto the floor. Part of this training can be that you're gonna work on your foot and ankle a little bit more, and hopefully by the end of it, your athletic performance across most domains will actually be improved. So, we're gonna look at three variations. So you've got the basic step. Okay, then you've got the half speed step. 
This is good for memory. Trying to learn a movement first. Put the heel down, put the heel down at the front. Put the heel down at the front, put the heel down at the front. And then the one that's good for actually getting you bounce, once you can do both of those quite well, is to actually create some lift. So now what I'm gonna do is do a kind of a, a more explosive one where I'm gonna drive force through my feet. So one, you see I'm getting much more height. So what this is doing is it's getting me more athleticism for the movement, allow me to produce more force. And if you're someone who does skipping, then you'll already be quite good at this. 